Rage gets unleashed and unmasked. Here's your look at the Hyatt Toys Exquisite Mini Predators Unmasked Berserker. Exquisite Mini is a new standard setting series for 118th scale, featuring super articulation action figures under Hyatt Toys. Setting our sights on another exquisite mini before we get a closer look at the unmasked Berserker Predator. Let's take this, my trusty tape measure. We're going to measure off to the very top of it just so I can give you guys the necessary 411s of just how tall these exquisite minis stand. I'm going to stop it right there. The unmasked Berserker stands 5.885 or 5.8. Stick with 5.8. We can switch that though over to centimeters, and you're looking at unmasked berserker being almost 15 centimeters, 14.9 to be exact. Seems like we've been looking at a lot of exquisite mini predators as of late, and because of that, we can bring in a couple of figures that we just recently looked at for some size comparisons. The most recently, we had a look at the invisible falconer, one of my personal favorites. Pardon my hairy arm. There he is next to the armored crucified predator. And we can also bring in the regular Crucified Predator, which I probably didn't free up enough space to do so. You can see that they're all pretty much going to be scaled the same to one another. They're all going to be about the same height. They're also going to be a little bit more bigger and thicker than some of the earlier Predator Exquisite minifigures we've looked at in the past. Looking at the figure's accessories, some of which are things that we have gotten with every Exquisite Mini up to this point. So things like, for example, the display stand is territory we have already covered on this muddy terrain. It is the same, in fact, display stand that we've gotten with other exquisite minis. There's another one just to show you the same example, as you can see. And they are really nicely detailed. I don't so quickly want to rush through this and say, oh, I, I get another, you get the same display stand, you get, get the same display stand. No, I mean, that, that's a nice looking muddy terrain. I also like the fact that they put a clear coat across it, so it looks like it's wet mud as well. There's a peg right here, and of course on the underside, you already know by now the drill that we're going to go through. There's slots on every side of the display stand. You can take these eye brackets. For this, we'll probably actually grab ourselves another display stand. We'll put the two together, and you basically just take these eye brackets, and we just sandwich the two halves together. Do the exact same thing on the lower one as well. And we'll slot that in place. And then just like that, you've got yourself a display stand. The neat thing about the display stands is not only does it expand the terrain that you can have your figures standing on top of, but you can also just use two stands on their own for displaying the figures. What I would suggest that you do is take the pegs and spin them around. So you got the pegs closer together. And then you can actually have one figure standing with one leg on either side of the display stand. Kind of a nice way to do that. So again, I like these. Not going to really say anything negative about the fact that we get, first of all, display stands. How many companies actually still include display stands with their figures? And the fact that we get as nicely detailed as the ones that we do, nice touch again on highest part. I'm going to put that to the side. The figure also comes included with a severed skull. Yanked and plucked, I'm sure, from some victim, I'm sure, that wasn't looking forward to running into a predator that day. Short of the fact that I feel like the skull and the spinal cord needed to be more like wet, like a clear finish on top of it so it looked like it was just recently pulled, I do like the detailing that they've done to it. There's a little bit of paint, unfortunately, on the back side of the skull, but at least it's on the back side of the skull. I'm not going to see it certainly from the front. It's the same skull that we have gotten with other exquisite minis. Probably a long list, I'm sure I could probably list off of all the different predators that have come included with this specific skull, so I won't do that. But you do, you do get at least the skull. And to currently hold it in his hand would be difficult because right now he's got uh, exaggerated or dynamic hands. And uh, you can't really have him holding it. But, but they also include a couple of swappable hands as well. One closed fist, one open hand. Unfortunately, though, the gripping hand that they gave for holding the skull just happens to be the hand that's on the same side as the blade. I wish they could have flipped that around and actually had the gripping hand on this side instead, just because it's so much more difficult to get around, navigate this softer blade to try to pull this out. 
Something also I've noticed with this figure as well, and I may have to try to heat this to get this to come out, is every single time I've tried to pull out the hand so far, it also removes and yanks out the ball peg as well. The ball peg really should still stay in the socket of the forearm. So unfortunately, as of right now, I can't get this hand out. May even have to just even take pliers. Let's just bring the gauntlet up a little bit. Yeah, I may have to just grab some pliers or something and very, very carefully, because I mean, you're dealing with a small peg too. You don't want to be forcing this too much, but I may have to just try to take pliers to see if I can remove the ball peg and keep that still in the socket of the forearm. Um, again, I, I kind of wish like this hand could have been on this side instead of this side. So you didn't have to fight and do again, all the movement around the blade itself. We'll talk more about the blade in a second. Of course, we will want to have a look at the head sculpt here. Being that this is the unmasked, you get a much more uglier looking Berserker Predator. It's got really interesting colors going for it. Colors that under any other normal circumstance, I don't think would work well. You wouldn't want to necessarily tile your kitchen with this sort of color scheme. It's green, it's yellow. It's got a whole lot of little flecking of red, gray, and of course black being the main color. It's so busy and yet works really well for Berserker Predator. Of course, when we get a closer look at the head sculpt, I do like those red eyes. And you can see there's the iris done in the same light lime green color as the rest of the skin. And you got pupils in there as well. I don't know why looking at this, this reminds me of the Cobra logo. If I put my hand right there, doesn't it kind of look a little bit like Cobra? It's probably just me. But the coloring, I would certainly say... As busy as it may be, it actually works pretty good for Berserker. It's got a really neat look to him. And of course, we spin it around. You can see the dreads on the back here. All get sort of touched by that crimson red. And the actual braided, the, the little ringlets here, are more of a kind of an off-purple pink color. He does have the plasma caster, though it's a little bit more fitted to his body. And it's a much long, longer cannon as well. You can see right there. It does have articulation, so of course you can move it back and forth, up and down. It's on a ball peg. It will, of course, give you a little bit of problem. Not too much. Not as much as, say, some of the other Predators when it comes to the figure's head articulation. Talk more about that in a second as well. Being that this is the Predators with an S, you're getting, of course, that bigger, bulkier body with a much broader-looking torso. It works quite well for these particular characters as well. Game spin around so you can see it from the back. I love the coloring that they went with for the armor here. It's not quite brown. It's not quite a copper color. It's sort of something in between. Nice coloring there also in the shoulder area too. Now, of course, we already talked about the blade here. Luckily, at least for changing out the hands, the blade is softer plastic. If this was a denser, more rigid plastic, then I'd be a little bit more worrisome about removing and changing out those hands. Still, again, I wish the hand was on this side instead of this side here. You can see the, the Predator here, the Berserker Predator, is wearing fingerless gloves. Everybody's wearing fingerless gloves. More of a lighter color on the inside here. Really, again, I like the coloring on this guy. Unfortunately, though, taking the figure out of the packaging, I did notice that his legs were a little in the warp side. You can see that they're not completely straight. I may take a hair dryer or submerge maybe the lower legs in hot water and see if I can just bend them. Essentially what I want to have is them looking like this instead of looking like this. Even at the beginning of this review when we had it on the rotisserie you probably even saw that the one leg hovered a bit over top of the other one. They weren't completely flat to the display base. One last thing we'll certainly look at is the footwear here. Now these are self-contained which means that there isn't going to be leg or, or foot articulation. There is going to be ankle articulation happening here. Sort of as you rotate the figure around, that's as much as you're going to get with the foot articulation. There's no additional after that. Speaking of articulation, let's have a look at the articulation now on Unmasked Berserker Predator. I know we already talked a little bit about this already, but his head is on a ball joint. Not only is it on a ball joint, but just underneath the, the little collar piece, which really is prone to lifting up all the time, there is actually seems to be a secondary ball joint right at the base of the neck. So it allows the head to move a little bit further down than what you would be able to get with normal predators. Good range of motion there. And of course, as you're rotating the head, just be careful that you don't hit the cannon on the side, which again, as we go back to it, has the articulation where you can move that up and down with the ball joint. So that's a nice touch as well. Upper torso is on a ball joint. The way that they've painted this sort of leads you to first think that this is all just one piece. 
that if anything, there would be articulation only at the bottom of the torso. But in actual fact, it's hidden in there by the fact that it does have the strap across of his armor. It's just underneath that ball joint, or at least the top half of the torso that is ball jointed. And you can rotate it all the way around. Um, they finished it off nicely too. So even if you move the top torso up, you can see they still put spots underneath it just knowing that somebody was going to do this, just knowing somebody was going to lift it up and say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. They never finished this part of his body. Well, they did, luckily. Whoosh. Anyways, <laughs> the arms come out. You can bring them out at about, about 90 degrees, just a little bit less than that. You can bring the arms and rotate them all the way around as well. Just be careful. A little bit on the tighter side. If, by the way, you have any of these figures, when you first get them out of the packaging and there's sort of resistance when it comes to the joints, don't force it, whatever you do. Just maybe take a hairdryer. That's apparently what a hairdryer sounds like. Just heat that up a little bit and soften up the joint. And you could, of course, rotate the forearm back and forth. You can rotate the hands back and forth, getting around that blade, of course. Legs split out. And because of the lower skirting, the way it is, softer plastic, it doesn't limit the legs, but you will notice that you can't bring the legs out completely. Something that seems to be holding them up a little bit. You bring the legs forward, you bring the legs back. You can swivel at the top of the thigh, double hinge happening, of course, on the knee. And then, of course, when we looked at the feet earlier, nothing has changed. The feet still only rotate all the way around, no hinging up and down. I like the look of Unmasked Berserker Predator. Something that looks so garish color-wise somehow works quite well for the Berserker Predator. The only critique I could make from the figure, at least I have in hand here, is changing out the hand was a little bit difficult because the peg wanted to stay behind in the hand. And as you can probably even see right here, right here, he's a bit bow-legged. I'm going to have to probably heat that up a little bit and see if I can bend it back into place. Other than that, though, I really like how this one turned out. While generally I'm not keen on the idea of the new Predator movie introducing a new Predator design where we have to start splicing DNA coming up with super uber Predators, I didn't mind the designs of these characters in the Predators movie. Berserker, Tracker, and of course Falconer, my favorite of the three, were pretty interesting designed Yauchas. And of course now we're getting an unmasked version of one of them, presented here from the folks over at Hyatt Toys as the unmasked Berserker Predator. Got some really interesting colors. Interesting, yes, would be the word I would want to use to describe it. Very interesting colors happening on this guy. He's big and larger than some of the older exquisite mini Predators. So even if you have like some of those older exquisite minis, if you stack them next to these Predators, like they would be in the film, these Predators would tower over them. They're a bigger framed figure, and they feel a little bit more sturdy and durable as well. I have one little problem with, of course, the bow legs on this particular Predator, but that's something I'm sure I could easily fix. And one thing you will also notice with the unmasked Berserker is I don't need a display stand either. These figures stand fine on their own. Really interesting stuff going on here with the unmasked Berserker Predator. A big thank you to the folks over at Hyatt Toys that provided the sample of the exquisite mini Predator's unmasked Berserker. If you guys are new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Turn the bell notification on and making sure, yes, you're coming back to this channel on a regular basis because we will be looking at more Haya toy releases and more exquisite mini predators. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.